I once applied for a position. What I am going to say about the process is no doubt coloured by the fact that I didn't get the job. I had half an hour before a panel of people chosen for their expertise. Each asked me one question. Each time it felt designed to trip me out. After about uh, 15 minutes, I just wanted to get out of there. The irony was that not only was it uh, a church position, but supposedly the selection process was designed uh, to find out how relational I was. Okay, I failed. I could have done better. Perhaps they managed to get my back up. But by the end, I felt the panel didn't really know me. They just managed to see me squirm. For my 10th birthday, uh, an aunt, who was also my godmother, gave me a Bible. I had a Church of England godmother and a Roman Catholic godfather. The Bible lay on top of my chest of drawers with, would you believe, a small statue of Mary on top of it. Occasionally, I'd take the Bible down and give it a go. I knew it was important, too important perhaps for it to just sit there. And I was curious to see what was inside it. One time, I tried the book of Proverbs. This sounds promising, I thought. But I came away disappointed. I was hoping for witticisms, bon mot, along the lines of a stitch in time saves nine, or there's many a slip twixt cup and lip. We want to be amused, don't we? We want our ears tickled, and we want easy answers, recipes that produce startling results in 30 minutes or less. The interview panel members each had their set question and a grid to register how well or otherwise I performed. Nowadays, you're more likely to find a spirituality section in a bookshop than religion, let alone theology. And in the vicinity, there'll be the large self-help section. Of course, self-help is a slight misnomer. What's really meant is the guru will help you if you buy his stroke her book. Nonetheless, it feeds on the idea that having paid my sixteen ninety nine and read the book, I'll then be able to conquer whatever all by myself. Do this and you'll succeed. Why? Is there a market for such books? And there appears to be a large market. We read them because we feel insecure. And there are others, the book writers, who appear more secure. Having read the book, we've got one over on those who haven't. We have the knowledge. In other words, pride. But, and here's the rub, there are always those who appear to be more in the know than we are. Hence the need to consume yet another book. What's the answer to this seemingly endless cycle? When 
will we be satisfied? I'm going to suggest the answer is in verse 7 of Proverbs chapter 1. It's on page 616 of the Church Bibles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. As a 10 or 11 year old, I would have read this and not be mightily impressed. Radio 4 broadcast the first episode of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy at 10.30 p.m. on Wednesday the 8th of March 1978 and I stumbled across it. I was hooked. As a 14 year old it was exactly what I was looking for. It was witty, clever and entertaining. It had more immediate appeal for me than the book of Proverbs had. The series featured a mighty computer, deep thought, built to answer the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. After much cogitation, it took seven and a half million years. Deep thought speaks. The answer is 42. Well, the answer was definitive and scientifically proven, but those receiving it felt rather like young Carl had done on reading The Fear of the Lord is the Beginning of Knowledge. We want easy answers, but the Bible doesn't give us them, which is just as well, really. After all, where do you go on being told that the answer is 42? The Bible isn't a tick-box self-help book. In fact, it isn't a self-help book at all. It's more of a your helpless book. None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, all have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. Is that what we want to hear? It wasn't what teenage Carl was after. So, come on preacher, give us some good news. The good news is we may be helpless, but we're not hopeless. The irony is that you need to hear and accept the bad news first in order to be ready and able to accept the good news. We need God. When I was very young, I made a mess of my room. I think I decided that a complete reordering was necessary. But bedtime came and everything was in disarray. Then my father appeared. Instead of being angry, what I feared, he just set about putting everything right again. And I slept soundly that night, profoundly grateful. God doesn't give us what we deserve. He's much more loving than that. Verse 5. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. Now, that's interesting. 
the wise, but discerning what? Even the gurus, even the book writers? Can you be wise and discerning and still have something to learn? Or perhaps it's the wise and discerning who realize that yes, there has to be something more. What is that something? I missed something out when quoting Paul from Romans, and he in turn was quoting from the Old Testament. There really is nothing new under the sun. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. The answer, it's simple, really. Seek after God. Yet why do people find this so difficult, so hard to swallow? People find relationships difficult. It all goes back to when Adam said to God, you gave this woman to me and she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. Genesis 3.12. Pass the buckism at its most naked. We certainly need help, but it's not a case of with a little help from my friends. Our condition goes deeper than that. We need more than that. We need God to dig us out of this mess. And thank God, he is willing to hear our cry if we are willing to utter it if we are willing to seek for him. In fact, he perceived that cry long, long ago. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. But whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. True wisdom is found only when we realize that we cannot find it in ourselves. What we need is not self-help, but God-help. The miracle is that help is on offer. God wants to be in relationship with us in and through his Son, Jesus. That is the ultimate good news. If I were to sum up the gospel, I'd say this. God wants to know us, warts and all, and to be known by us. Oh, it's easy to be wise after the event. I know that for myself. It's easy to spill off undigested facts. I've heard plenty of that. But what about understanding, true understanding? What about a release from insecurity and its concomitant pride, such a vicious cycle. Long ago, the prophet Jeremiah spoke these words about God's wisdom, true wisdom. This is what the Lord says, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. 
But let him who boasts boast about this, that he has the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. May this be so for us here today. Amen.